In this video, I'm going to be talking about cell division, the process that all cells need to go through in order to divide from one cell into two. This occurs because in order to create a cell, it has to come from a pre-existing cell, and cell division is the way that that happens. Two main types, depending on whether you're a prokaryote or a eukaryote. Prokaryotic cells, like bacteria, have binary fission. Eukaryotic cells undergo mitotic cell division. It's more complex, and the reason is because the eukaryotic cells have chromosomes, they need to not only copy those, but then sort those into the daughter cells. So before division can begin, the cells need to grow sufficiently in order to divide from one cell into two. This increases their membrane size and allows them to build new proteins and other structures like ribosomes, store enough food, and if they have organelles like mitochondria and chloroplasts, to copy enough of these so that they are sufficient for each daughter cell. They also need to double their DNA. That's really because one cell becomes two and each of the daughter cells needs to have their own copy of the DNA. For binary fission, copying of the DNA is fairly straightforward. Prokaryotic cells have a circular loop of genomic DNA. They copy that, and that loop goes into each side of the daughter cells. For the eukaryotic cells, it's much more complicated because they've got those chromosomes that need to be not only copied, but then sorted out so there's an even number or the correct number of chromosomes on each side. And this goes through a number of phases, which we'll look at in detail later. In order to talk about those divisions, it's useful to talk about the chromosomes, and we need to increase our vocab to do that. So really, there are a couple of key things we need to know about. Firstly, for eukaryotic cells, they'll have pairs of chromosomes, one coming from the mother and one from the father. These have the same genes in the same places, and they're the same size, but the DNA sequence can change or be very slightly between them. So these are called homologous chromosomes. After those homologous chromosomes have been copied, they look like this. So there's still only two homologous chromosomes there, but each of those chromosomes is made up of two sister chromatids. Sister chromatids have the same genes in the same sequence, but also the same DNA sequence because one has been copied from the other. So sister chromatids are copies, homologous chromosomes are similar matching chromosomes. Here's the process of binary fission. For the bacterial cell, it has its genomic DNA in one big loop, and it might have an additional small loop or two, which are called plasmids. These get copied, and so you have the two copies there, move to either side of the cell, and then the cell divides in two, and you'll see that there's a DNA copy in each side and a plasmid in each side. You'll also see that things like the ribosomes end up evenly distributed across both cells and so the daughter cells match the mother cell. A simple process. For eukaryotes, they have to go through a cell cycle. This includes interphase, which includes two phases of growth, G1 and G2, and the S phase, DNA synthesis, where the DNA is replicated. So grow, double your DNA, grow some more, and then they're ready to enter mitosis. At the end of mitosis, the cell can divide into two, and that's called cytokinesis. So if you want to look at the details of those phases of mitosis, there's a diagram in your textbook that's really useful, and descriptions on page 92. This web page also covers some of that information in detail, and Mr. Lacornu has a video on mitosis here. We'll just quickly have a look at this diagram. So just to understand those phases, interphase is the phase that cells are normally in, just their regular um, growth. Once they're ready to divide, they'll undergo prophase, where the DNA, after it's been copied, will condense into these chromosomes. In metaphase, the chromosomes line up along the mitotic spindle, so this is called mitotic spindle, and there are cytoskeletal frameworks that the chromosomes will move along. Metaphase, they line up across the middle. Anaphase, they start to move to either end of that cell, then telophase, which is the end phase, it's just underneath my video there. In telophase, those copied chromosomes are now divided into each side of that cell and it's ready to divide. So make sure you check out these links and have a look through um, the descriptors and you'll understand mitosis a lot better.